Welcome to Klein's Geometry. Today we're going to talk about Lesson 8-1, Similarity in Right Triangles. This is Part 1. The first thing I want to talk to you about is if you're given a right triangle and you draw a uh, altitude from this base, AB, to this point, C, uh, what you've done is you've created, and you know altitudes have a perpendicular line right or per perpendicular angle here between the, itself and the base. So you've actually created three right triangles. The smallest one is angle BDC or DCB. The medium sized one is angle DAC, DCA. And the largest one is triangle ABC. Now, these triangles have an interesting relationship. Um, if you were to look at the small triangle and the large triangle, this one here and this, you see they both have a right angle. D is a right angle for the large, or D is a right angle for the small one, and C is a right angle for the large one. And they also share angle B. So by angle angle similarity, they're, they're similar triangles, the small and the large triangle. Also, if you look at the medium and the large triangle, this medium triangle has a right angle at D, and the large one has a right angle at C. So they have one angle, one pair of corresponding congruent angles, and they both share angle A. So they also are similar by angle-angle similarity. Now, once you know that, you can say, since the small one's similar to the large one and the medium's similar to the large one, by the transitive property, we know that all three of these triangles are similar. So we can say this triangle is similar to this triangle is similar to that triangle. And once you know that, all kinds of interesting things can happen. We can, if we know a couple of these lengths, we can find every length in the figure. That's what we're going to be doing. And when we do it, we're going to be doing what's called finding the geometric mean. But before we do that, let's talk about how could I write, because this similarity statement doesn't really work. We don't have our corresponding parts similar. So how would I write a similarity statement and show the correct corresponding angles? So we have to put the congruent angles together. Have I got a process for you? So to decide which angles are congruent, and write the similarity statement. Here's the process you're going to follow. The first thing you'll do is you'll look at your three, and we're going to look at this figure right here now, W, X, Y, Z. Notice we have a small triangle, a medium triangle, and our large triangle. And the first thing we're going to do, because you know the congruent angles have to be corresponding, so the first thing we'll do, we'll put the, we're going to look at our right angle, okay? So, and we're going to look at our small triangle, compare it to the medium, compare it to the large. Small triangle, right angle is X. Medium triangle, right angle is X. And large triangle, the right angle is Z. Now, we have to make sure we get our corresponding angles, congruent angles. So the next thing I'm going to suggest to you is to go up the shortest leg. So if I look at my small triangle and I put my pencil on the, the right angle, if I go up the short leg, x to y is the shortest path. x to z doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to put y as my next angle. Now if I look at my medium sized triangle, and I have to start here because there's my right angle. I start at x again. If I go up the short leg, I get to z. And then if I look at my large triangle, if I start at Z, I go up the short leg, I get to Y. So now I've got these angles are all congruent, these angles are all congruent, and to find my third pair of congruent angles, well, just whatever's left over by the third angle theorem. We've got, for the short, small triangle, I've got X, Y, and Z. For the medium triangle, I have X, Z, I need W. And for the large triangle, I have Z, Y, I need W. So to write my similarity statement, now I'm just going to put these in order.
triangle XYZ is similar to triangle XZW and that's similar to triangle ZYW. Just reading right down here. So that's how the easiest way to write a similarity straight line. Look at your three triangles, identify your right angle, up the short leg, and grab your third angle, and you've got a statement. So that's the first thing we wanted to share with you, and the next thing we're going to talk about in this video is what is a geometric mean? All right? And a geometric mean is simply, um, the geometric mean of two positive numbers is the square root of their product. Now that's a mouthful, but it's the easiest thing going. All you do is, if you're given two numbers, say 2 and 8, the mean is the square root of their product. Product means multiply. So the square root of 2 times 8. So all I'll do is I'll simplify that. And I have to multiply before I take the square root. 2 times 8 is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. Found the mean. That's all we're doing. So the only thing here, you know there's always a catch. If you don't have a perfect square, you have to write your answer in simplest radical form unless you're told specifically in your homework to round it. So let's look at this. Let's find the mean again. I've got 4 and 9, so I want the square root of 4 times 9, square root of 36, 6. And you go, whew, that was easy. Didn't have to worry about that. It was a perfect square. Now what about 6 and 15? Well, the mean is going to be the square root of 6 times 15, which is the square root, 6 times 5 is 30, put down the 0, carry 3, 6 times 1 is 6, 7, 8, 9. That is not going to be pretty, but I see a 9 in here. 9 times 10 would be 90, and I think 9 is a perfect square, so I'm going to call that the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. That's the same as the square root of 90. Well, square root of 9 is 3, so I end up with 3 square root of 10. And that is my final answer in simplest radical form. Okay? Uh, number three, my mean is going to be the square root of 8 times 9. Um, well, if I look at that, I can see right here, if I multiply that, I have the square root of 72. Well, that's not a perfect square. I might just look at it from here. There's two ways to go about this. If I knew that square root of 72 and I was good at my multiplication, I'd say, wow, that's the same as the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 36 is 6, so I get 6 square root of 2. If I was needed a little more practice at my multiplication, I might go from here and say, well, the square root of 9 times the square root of 8, 9 is a perfect square, so that would be 3, and 8 is the same as 4 times 2. 2, well, the square root of 4 is 2, so then I'd have 3 times 2 is 6, bring down my square root of 2. Notice, I get to the same place either way. So, if you're not good at your multi oh, I'm sorry. If you're not so good at your multiplication tables, or you don't remember your square roots as well, so you can take the long way. Square root of 9 is 3. 8 is the same as 4 times 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Then just multiply these together and get an answer. If you are good at your multiplication tables and you're the perfect squares, you might just say, whoa, 36 times 2, and get an answer. Either way, that's all you're doing to find a geometric mean. Um, multiply your two numbers, take the square root. So that's it on geometric means, and the next video will tell you how to solve the triangles, which is going to be several problems on your homework, so please stay tuned.